Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my first top 10 video ever. I have been planning to make this video since a lot of time ago and it is finally here. As you all know, Heroes of the Storm is full with awesome characters from all Blizzard's games, and the roster is getting bigger and bigger over time, making a lot of players speculate about what heroes are going to be added next and the heroes that they really want to see join the game. Because the whole universe of Blizzard is full with wonderful and badass characters. And as you can imagine, I made a list of my own. Without further ado, let's get into it. I present you the top 10 heroes that I want to see in Heroes of Storm. Number 10 When I tell you about a female blood elf that should appear in Heroes of a Storm, Valyra Sanguinar will probably come across your mind. Am I right? I mean, I don't blame you. She's everyone's favorite pick in the forums when it comes to the female bee elf department. Because... Um... Reasons? But guess what? She's not appearing in this stuff. Nope. Sorry, Valira. Well played. I'm here to talk to you about another powerful female blood elf named Liatri. Lady Liatri, the leader and matriarch of the Blood Knights, aka Blood Elf Paladin. Why should Blizzard add her into the game? Well, first, she's one of the most relevant characters of the Blood Elves and the Horde. Second, she has a simple yet cool design. And third, there is only one Paladin in Heroes right now which is Uther, a support, and obviously in the Paladin's talent tree, a holy Paladin. So that means that there is a space for a protection Paladin, a slash tank slash warrior, and a retribution Paladin slash DPS slash assassin, and Lady Liadrin is, in my opinion, the perfect candidate for the retribution Paladin hero. My hammer burns with holy fire! And for all that she has done, I think it's more than fair to give her a chance in the spotlight. Besides, her story, of course. Number 9 Overwatch, the newest game from Blizzard. When it was first announced, we all knew that it was just going to be a matter of time for us to see characters from this game being added into Heroes of the Storm. With its release being so close, and with the arrival of Tracer into the Nexus, Is that a frog in a bubble? we can expect even more heroes from Overwatch to join in the upcoming months. And one that I'm especially interested to see in heroes is D.Va. Her real name is Hannah Sung, a South Korean teenager celebrity gamer and mech pilot. Just by that description you can already tell how awesome she is. Now, I'm not sure what role she would be. In Overwatch she's a tank, so maybe she could be a warrior? I'm going to be 100% honest with you here. The main reason why I want to see her in Heroes is because she's not just a gamer, she's a StarCraft professional player. Yes, as you heard a character from a Blizzard game that is a pro player of another game of Blizzard, and I would love to see her interacting with big characters from StarCraft. What would her reaction be, meeting for the first time face to face with Raynor, Kerrigan and Artanis? I don't know, but it would be something hilarious to see. Number 8 I am Lady Shin, Slayer of Kings and Gods. You have made a grave mistake. Down the drums, the Thunder King comes. With such a fitting title, I bet you can already understand why he must have been Heroes of the Storm. Lei Shen 
the Thunder King is the first emperor of the Mogu. He's one of the most, if not the most, important and powerful character from Pandaria. With the powers to control the wind and the storm, and create life, none could defy his rule while it lasted. Just to give you a better idea of how badass he is, he fought for 30 days and 30 nights against the August Celestial, who is basically a demigod, Suen, the White Tiger. The unworthy have not yet learned of my power. And in the end, Lei Shen was victorious. I tell you, if Mrs. of Pandarian had a main villain like the other WoW expansions, that villain would have totally been Lei Shen. He could be a unique addition to heroes with such a powerful design and potential to be one of a kind warrior with his lightning abilities. If Blizzard decides to get him in the game someday, I hope his trailer to be like his previous one for WoW. Gather heroes, sound the drums, the Thunder King comes, the Thunder King comes. Number 7 Remember that I talked about the August Celestial Tsuen? Well, in fact, there are four August Celestials. Tsuen, the White Tiger, represents the strength and the north. Niu Zhao, the Black Ox, represents fortitude and the west. Qi Ji, the Red Crane, represents hope and the south. And last but not least, Yu Lun, the Jade Serpent, represents wisdom and the east. I would love to see them all in heroes, but if I had to pick one, it would totally be Yu Long, and the reason is her design. That is true wisdom. In Heroes, there are some characters that were chosen to join the game not because of their relevance, but because of their designs, like Stitches, for example. We all want to see dragons in the game, and with the introduction of Chromie, yeah, that thing is actually a dragon, we are probably going to see more coming soon. And the Jade Serpent is one that definitely stands out from the rest with her magnificence. I can see her being either a ranged assassin or a support. But I think being a ranged assassin suits her better. Very good. In WoW, when she dies, she can revive again through a Jade statue. So maybe Blizzard can give her some sort of rebirth mechanic. All that I know for sure is that I want to see her in the game. Number 6 World of Warcraft is full with unique and interesting races, and one that I really like are the Arakoa. They're a high intelligent avian race and I would love to see an Arakoan heroes for design reasons. Regardless if it is an outcast Arakoa or a winged Arakoa, so I'd really like to see one of each kind in the game. We have a few to pick from. We have Rashad, Pyrex, even Terok, the Talon King himself. And actually, Terok was going to be the number 6 of my list. But there is another Arakoa who took his place, because I think he deserves far more to be in the game. And if you ever encounter yourself in the Tanan jungles, sometimes you can hear his dark voice whispering to you. Behind the veil, all you find is death. The one who traded one curse for another, the Shadow Lord Iskar. And now, the veil covers all! I totally liked this guy from the first moment I saw him. He was actually a good guy and an outcast Arakoa. But then he let himself to be tempted by Gul'dan and now he's a fell Arakoa. Which looks pretty badass. You had better learn to fly! He could be a melee assassin or a specialist, and there is just so much potential for his hit. With his fell chakram, focused blast, phantasmal winds. It's a long way down! He could even have his avatar for his ultimate. 
which is this giant fell fire raven of death. With all these abilities, his cool design and a tragic and awesome story, the Nexus needs to recruit his card. Number 5 Whenever I thought about the Protoss, the first words that came to my mind used to be ire, honor, justice, unity, until I saw Alarak. Alarak is the High Lord of the Taldarim, a faction of Protoss that basically consists in the entire opposite of what we used to thought about the Protoss. They're brutal, bloodthirsty, and have a more evil look, despite not being evil. As their leader, Alarak is the perfect representation of all that. In my mind's eye, I have delivered the killing blow in a thousand ways. He's a merciless, overconfident tyrant and kind of a douchebag. You think us fools? Yes, but that is irrelevant. But that's the reason we love him so much. Even Dustin Browder, the game director of Heroes of a Storm, said on several tweets that he wants to see Alarak in the game someday, so there is a huge chance that we are going to see him soon in the Nexus. Oh well, this is truly a miracle! When it comes to his possible role, a warrior would make a lot of sense. He has this huge armor and loves to be in the front line of a fight. Also, one of his abilities in StarCraft, Soul Absorption, keeps him sustained to staying in the fight, and that can be implemented in Heroes as well. Another option would be to make him a tanky assassin, like Butcher or Raynor, making players to think twice before facing such a force to reckon with alone. Welcomes welcomes defeat. Number 3 Brothers, I truly believe all of ya will agree when I say This game needs more trolls, mod. Taz Dingo! <laughs> yes! Seriously, it's about time that we get a troll people. Blizzard announced Sulgin a long time ago, but we still don't know exactly when are they going to add him into the game. And while it certainly would be awesome to see him in Heroes, another troll that I'm looking forward to see included is Volgin, the leader of the Dark Spirit tribe and the war chief of the Horde. I speak for the Horde. A fearless, powerful shadow hunter, a wise ruler, and my favorite character from the Horde. From all the heroes in this list, he is, in my opinion, the most tricky when it comes to speculate about his possible role, because I can see him as an assassin, a support, or even a specialist. First, I used to imagine him as an assassin, but then I found this amazing concept made by Jamie A. Garcia proposing Volgin as a melee support, and the more I look into this concept, the more I like it. He really did an excellent job with the 3D model and his abilities. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link in the description down below. I am not worthy. Yes, you are, Volgin. And Blizzard, please, if you ever plan to give Volgin a mount of his own in a bundle or something, give him his badass rap. Rose deserves to ride into battle with style. I will give my all for the horde. When the Nexus calls you, I know you will, Volgin. I know you will. Number 3 The Naga, my favorite race from World of Warcraft. I fell in love with these guys since they first appeared in Warcraft 3, so it shouldn't be a big surprise the fact that I really want to see a Naga hero in this game. Being more specific, a male Naga hero. Why a male Naga? Well, we know that probably more than one female Naga is going to appear eventually. Because some people have found data mined information from the game related to Lady Vash and even Ashara, the Empress of the Naga. 
As you can see, male and female from this species are really different from each other. And you have to admit, the design of the regular male naga is awesome. But not as awesome as the design of the high warlord Nagentus. I mean, just look at him. He has a freaking hermit crab like arm. And not only he looks cool, but also he's one of the most powerful naga to have ever lived. Baal, la mezita! He was a champion of Lady Vash and the protector of the Black Temple under the command of Illidan. And he has everything he needs to be a warrior. Tidal Shield gives him sustain, and Impaling Spine could be an excellent crowd controlling ability. My patience has run out! Die! Die! For the rest of his kit, well, Blizzard could make crazy stuff for this guy. Do you imagine him summoning a giant tidal wave for his ultimate? I just hope Blizzard realized the potential of this naga, because Nagentus is the perfect candidate to drown the Nexus into the murky depths. Blood will flow. Number 2 Did you think I was down with Overwatch? Come on! With 21 fantastic heroes, it is really difficult to only pick one. And my favorite of all time is Reinhardt. Justice will be done! Reinhardt Wilhelm is a former agent of Overwatch who lives by the knightly codes of valor, justice and courage. When Overwatch was disbanded, he started a crusade across Europe, fighting for justice like a knight of old. 100% German power! He's a honorable, charismatic man who only wants to see justice done and kick some ass. You know, for being a 61 years old man, Reinhardt is a total badass. Respect your elders! I think it's very obvious that he would be a warrior in Heroes. It's almost like he was born for this role. And his hit in Overwatch suits perfectly in Heroes as well. Barrier Field, Charge and Fire Strike would be his Q, W and E abilities respectively. And Earth Shatter is ultimate. Here's a fun fact. In Reinhardt's comic Dragon Slayer, his squire Bridget tells a little girl that Reinhardt has an active imagination. And this is shown when he fights against a gang named the Dragons, and he imagines them all like real dragons or dragon-like men. Now imagine his reaction if he sees actual dragons in Heroes of a Storm. It would be something pretty fun to watch. There is still more to my tale! And I bet your story is going to continue in the Nexus. Number 1 Pain. My hatred burns through the cavernous deeps. Despite being formerly known as Altharian, the Earth Warrior. The truth is that over thousands of years he has been called by so many different names and titles. The Black Aspect, Daxas, Black Scourge, Worldbreaker, the Cataclysm, and many more. However, nowadays almost everyone knows him as Deathloop, a destroyer. He is my favorite character not only from World of Warcraft, but also from the whole universe of Blizzard. <laughs> what can I say? I love dragons, and no other character deserves to join the roster of Heroes of the Storm as much as Deathwing. Being one of the most important characters from the lore and the main villain during the Cataclysm expansion, in which he literally changed the world of Azeroth forever. Some people complain about his size, 
saying that he's too big to be a playable hero, and yeah, he's freaking huge, but come on, size doesn't matter. Just look at Asmodon. This is how he looks in Diablo 3 compared to a human. This is how he looks in a cinematic compared to a human. And this is how he looks in Heroes compared to a human. Blizzard doesn't need to make Deathwing huge, they just need to make him a little bit bigger than Asmodon. Considering that we already have a dragon who is a ranged assassin, I can see Deathwing as a warrior or a specialist. After all, we already know how good he is at destroying entire cities. To be honest, I just can't wait to see him bringing havoc into the Nexus. Hey, you made it to the end! This channel is approved by Abbott, the Evolution Master. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and a comment in the section down below. Tell me what are your thoughts on this top and what other characters would you like to see in Heroes of the Storm. For more tops and gameplays, click on these links and subscribe to my channel. Logical decision. Special thanks to Victor Franco for helping me with this video. And to the rest of you, Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video, bye!